What is up, everybody? Noel and Santino here for an exciting video game review for the video game section of the Noel Comics YouTube channel. You know, sometimes I wonder what it would be like if Ultra Vortec for the Atari Jaguar somehow uh, combined itself via Fusion Dance with uh, Soul Edge for the PlayStation. Well, think no farther uh, than Mace the Dark Age for the N64, which is what we're going to be reviewing today. Do you want some of that uh, angsty, metal, like you know, medieval imagery kind of thing, then uh, do you like uh, the handful of fighting games on the Nintendo 64? Well, then Mace the Dark Age has you covered. I remember playing this game in 1997 at a friend's house and thinking to myself, man, this game actually looks pretty good. Um, and at the time, you know, you don't pay a lot of attention to gameplay mechanics. You know, you're more just into the whole experience of playing it. And I just thought it looked interesting. It also kind of reminded me of the Sega Genesis game, Sword of Sudan, uh, or Sudan, I don't actually know how it's pronounced, but this plays a lot better. That was a very clunky, kind of Conan the Barbarian-esque game. This has a lot of, you know, like it's kind of like, it's got kind of a Mortal Kombat 4 vibe. It was made by Midway. Um, I believe it was produced by Atari, which would explain the Ultra Vortec vibe. The boss actually kind of reminds me of the boss from Ultra Vortec. Uh, so without further ado, Let's get down I think to playing. I beat the boss you beat Ultra, you beat the I, boss, the Ultra Vortex. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like a big monster type boss. Although yeah. I mean, that trope was not unusual in fighting games, but it makes sense that you know Ultra Vortex was the best fighting game in my opinion on the Atari Jaguar, and then the big Atari fighting game uh, on the N sixty four has this kind of monster boss that's kind of you know lava esque. Which there's also the Soul Edge. Uh, inspiration you know so let's get out of play all right it is mace the dark age for the nintendo 64 so what we're going to do right now is we're going to go down to our options setting here and uh, we are uh, absolutely going to put this on the easiest difficulty it's actually very easy right it's actually not a very easy game uh it starts out no, very easy. we're going to put it on very easy yes santino you're correct sir uh, um that's just, it's just an easy yes Okay, so I'm going to uh, adjust our controls here because, um, you know, I'm using a uh, PlayStation-style pad for the Ultra, the Super Console X. Um, so I want, uh, you know, just to kind of switch this up a little bit here. Yeah. And I want that to be strong. I want this to be quick. And I think this will work out just fine. Um, now, one thing about uh, this game is... It starts out, you know, kind of easy, kind of chill, kind of fun, and you're like, oh, wow, this is like a pretty good fighting game on the Nintendo 64. However, you know, we have our cast of, uh, you know, medieval, uh, you know, kind of teenager cool characters okay, here. Th this sounds similar. I'm going to be Blondie over here. Um, the game starts out you know kind of accessible and fun and then as the game progresses it gets to like button mashing territory here it just gets very very cheap um but uh yeah and so the final boss. it's uh i can't even remember his name he's some like lava dude who like he's like a lava dragon that pops out of the ground and what the final level. He's the final boss. Was this only quite the form? I'm sorry. No, that is his final form. You just get two rounds. Um, there's two final bosses of this game. Um, one is like a gargoyle, and the other is uh, this like dragon dude. Um, a gargoyle. A gargoyle is like a stone bat dude, like. It'd be like if Batman, um, like, was made out of stone and, like, squatted over the side of a building. That would be what a gargoyle is. Except it's not a guy dressed up like a bat. It's just like a man-bat thing. Also, that's kind of giving me Mortal Kombat vibes. It is absolutely giving Mortal Kombat vibes because this game came out in 1996, which is when Mortal Kombat ruled 
the American fighting game world. I mean, I think Street Fighter was better, um, but Mortal Kombat was definitely the game that all the American video game makers were really interested in copying. It was like the it game. And so we got games like Mace the Dark Age and Ultra Vortech that were taking the style of Mortal Kombat and doing their own thing with it. Now, this game and Mortal Kombat 4, because Mortal Kombat was just making the move to 3D, so, you know, this was trying to Which coincide with... not Mortal a good idea. I, I agree, Santino. I think Mortal Kombat's move to 3D was fine for kind of like a one and done, but, you know, once it made the move to 3D officially, it really, I think, lost a lot of its charm. Because what made Mortal Kombat cool, in my opinion, was uh, the digitized, uh, the real actors, the real martial artists in like a real over the top uh, situation. So right now we're in the early portions of this game and you know, it's, uh, it's, it's going, it's smooth, it's fun, all is well here. You know, but as you move up the ladder. Okay, I'm surprised Street Fighter didn't try to make a game. Actually, Santino, they did. And it was called Street Fighter EX, and we should totally review that on the channel here. I probably did. Did we review Street Fighter EX? I think Well, I'll have to check the, the archives here. We review so many quality games, sometimes you lose track of them here. Yeah. Like we do so many quality reviews on the Noel Comics YouTube channel here. Uh, 2012? I think 2012 is when I started this YouTube channel. There was one YouTube channel I had before this that I didn't really upload much on. It was, I think it was called like Kyo Geo or Kyo Koizumi. And I figured it's like, well, I want to make a YouTube channel that really focuses on my comic book art. So I made the Noel Comics YouTube channel and the rest is history. Although I think on that Kyo Geo channel, I did have, uh, I definitely had comic book art. Uh, one thing I should talk about uh, right here. Um, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. I wasn't even paying attention to sub counts. Um... I honestly started building up the YouTube channel a lot when you were born, Santino, because Donald Trump just got elected president and you were a baby, and all these like liberal idiots were having meltdowns about Donald Trump. Not that I'm saying I like or hate Donald Trump, I'm just kind of neutral on the dude. Uh, but, you know, anyway, but like all these people who you thought were smart were all having total nervous breakdowns, and like, I was just like, I, I need to just do something chill and get away from this like BS. Plus I had this adorable little baby and his name was Santino. So to relax, yes. Yeah, so to relax, what I would do is I would watch video game reviews, um, like classic game room. And I thought to myself, like, you know, I had a couple video game reviews on the old channel. I think I reviewed uh, Buster Douglas Knockout Boxing and um, uh, X-Men versus Street Fighter. I had a very kind of crude capture card. Um, and uh, so I thought to myself, you know, I'll just make my own re YouTube reviews and upload my comic book art. And, you know, I was also interested in philosophy and stuff. So, I, you know, made some of those. And then eventually we got into live streaming once that started to become a thing. And uh, the rest is history here. So, yeah. Uh, well, it also kind of started in 2021 because that was when Baby was born. Well, I think the first video I ever did with Baby was a review for Bloodsport 2. By the way, I think Baby just came back from her first haircut. Oh, you're so pretty. Did you have a good haircut, Baby? <laughs> We're doing a video game review, baby. We were just talking about how we started doing video game reviews when Santino was a baby, and now here you are. And I was talking about how I think our first video game review, Serafina, was Bloodsport 2, and Daddy was home because he had to get a tooth pulled. And in between excruciating pain, I was watching Bloodsport sequels. Well, I think the next one was with both of the kids, because then, ah! then baby came in. Go right? down! <laughs> Gosh darn it. I blame the government. Uh, so anyway. <laughs> yeah, I blame him for everything. No, I don't, I'm just, I'm just a stupid thing that people do. Uh, anyway. Um, so any hoo-ha. I started the YouTube channel because uh, I just, I had a kid and I wanted to relax. I was watching a lot of video game reviews. Uh, at least in terms of the style of YouTube channel we have now, which, you know, has a heavy, heavy section on, uh, you know, video game uploads and reviews, so... 
And I thought it was really cool. I saw some dude filming his TV, and I just thought that looked cool, so I kind of like that vibe, so. So now what we're doing here, we're, we're getting into the portion of the game with, like, button mashing territory here. So, and the other thing you can do here is you can do fatalities here. So he just killed me. That was called the execution to the extreme. Good job. Now what we're going to do here is, uh, we're going to hopefully this saved my game here. We're going to load state here. And I'm going to show you guys the final boss here. This right oh, here no. is the final boss. The D on my grave stands for Dracula. <laughs> oh, I lost. His name is As Osmodius. As Osmodius. The other thing, though, is like because this is a, through a save state, I think I uh, I, di I have a different control scheme here, so I got to get used to that on the fly in a hurry. Yeah, it is. The analog is doing kicks, which I hate. The N64 had this really crude, like you know, other, like, the, the, the C, the CD pad, which, uh, that sounds cooler than it is. I just lost here. I thought it was kind of like the C stack. It, it was, it, yeah, so basically it had these, it, it had, like, the, the system of, uh, tr uh, like how the PlayStation controller has, but, uh, it was, like, in addition to another two buttons here, and the way that that's translating on this controller that I'm playing with is it's making the other PlayStation analog, the, the the C buttons. Uh, I saw like a guy like his mouse without moving, and he actually found out a way to move. Interesting. With the C stick, but it was on it was on the GameCube, the GameCube mouse button. Which like a lot of people. I'm not gonna lie, I beat this game the other day by using save states because it gets to the point where you're just you just shift from kind of responsive fluid gameplay to button mashing and right now we're doing do button mean, mashing i mean i'm just hitting any button i think i can get a rhythm with and just attacking forward as opposed to doing something like you would do in street fighter you know or tekken or which would be like look for an opening you know the buttons you're gonna hit you know or even like the mortal Kombat games which uh you know are less um I think less intuitive, but th th there's not a lot of logic here. I'm just kind of panicking and hitting buttons and trying to find, like, little pockets here. Yeah. Oh, well, here comes Baby. And I think I just got game over here. So, uh, this is probably going to be the, the, the sad ending where uh, I have to go open a Taco Bell and, uh, you know, <laughs> have to deal with annoying employees. So there we have it, guys. On a scale of uh, 1 to 10, I give uh, Ultra Vortex a 7 out of 10. It's good. It's above average, but it could be a little better. And for the Nintendo and for the Nintendo 64, it's an example of a uh, interesting and, uh, you know, a good it's fighting a, game to have a, in your it's collection. It's not, not, not too shabby. So uh, there you have it. Take care, like, and subscribe, and we will see you in the very near future. You want to watch Miss Rachel on the Noel phone? <laughs> All right, you can do that. Take care. Bye-bye.